Gross and goons with greenish skin. So close your eyes and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. <laughs> of losers. Igor! Yes, master. What is it this time? What were you doing out in the lane? <laughs> I wasn't playing tennis, master, but I was outside chasing the stream in the rain. I wouldn't want you to play tennis anyway. It's a rotten racket. <laughs> That's a funny... <laughs> of course it is, but there's no time for jesting. <laughs> for now! It's the time for... Say it! You are out! Raising... The flag of Transylvania and the national anthem. Ah, uh, very close. But I have a better idea. Yes, master. We will raise the flag of Transylvania and sing our national anthem. Yes, master. I knew I'd come up with something bad. Uh, yes, master. <laughs> gaudy, gaudy Transylvania. The werewolves some bats will always maim ya. The murky moor will likely claim ya as we go stump. I pledge by the sign of the three toed sloth that I will do my best to do my duty to always obey the laws of the werewolf path and to never rest until Bruce lives once more and takes his rightful place in the annals of distinguished monsters. And I can once again return to my beloved. Glorious. Glory. Transylvania. Glory, glory, Transylvania. It's the toe tapping, does it not? Glory, Transylvania. As we go stumbling. Good timing. Through. Beautiful, master. Beautiful. I kiss your foot. Don't come I kiss your... near me, you clumsy ox! Now, what is this silly talk about you chasing a stream? Yes, master, I was outside and I chased a stream for miles and miles and miles and miles. Miles and miles and miles and miles. Sounds like four miles. Well, <laughs> what happened? Did you catch it? No, master, I couldn't catch it. Why not? It was too fast for me. It was running water. <laughs> I don't believe him! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Now down the hall and turn left. Second door on the right. The Oracle says when he makes predictions, they come true. And if they're awful forecasts, well, there's nothing he can do. But sometimes he predicts his subject's going to get a letter, or that his health will fail and then suddenly get better. He says, I look in some folks' hands and see almost next to nothing. And when their future's that banal, I have to make up something. I know it's pretty trivial information that I'm giving, but after all, an oracle has got to make a living. Thank you, Maharishi. 
You have a groovy band. I am the Oracle. Easy on the criticism. A wonder to behold. Have you ever seen another who has the powers I have? Have you ever seen another who can see into the future? Have you ever seen another who can conjure up a spirit? Have you ever seen anybody as stupid as I am about the crystal balls? No, I'll never mind that now. For now it is time to get to our sign of the day. A wistful mist at the stars of kiss. Which sign, whose life, will fortune twist? Ah, and our sign is Sagittarius. And a special hello to all the kids who were born between November the 22nd and December the 21st. For you are Sagittarius, our astrological sign for today. Yes, Sagittarius, one of the loftiest characters of them all. Everyone respects a Sagittarius, for he has a strong sense for what is right and what is wrong. Sagittarius, here is your horoscope for today. Now, I will once again trap my hand inside the crystal ball. Let us see what will happen. Very good. Hmm. Oh, magic crystal, crystal ball. Tell me now. Tell me all. Come on, you're making it. No, it is coming in now. Yes. Ah, expect the good with the bad today, Sagittarius. That is right. Keep your spirits up as best you can and try to take everything with a pinch of salt. Everything, that is, except your milk and cookies, eh? <laughs> yeah, a little premature, are you not? I'm not finished. I haven't even had a chance to answer the letters that the kids were kind enough to write into me. Why don't you get lost? speak to the Maharishi about getting you out of the group. Dear Oracle, please explain what astral travel means. That's a very good one. Well, astral travel is the act of being able to leave one's body at a tra and travel at a speed, a great speed, with the use of a second or astral body. You see, the astral body is said to be inside all of us. Only a few of us know how to use it, like me. The astral body is made up in the image of, of everyday bodies, but of a lighter, shinier fiber. Using your astral body is more a matter of, of concentration. Oh, you go, I'm hurting myself with these nails. A person who does, does it must have a great desire to undertake this act. It is still a subject in need of much study. And I think that someone is trying to tell me something. Keep cooking, Maharishi. What do you think, Voodoo? All right, all right, at least you can keep it tempo. Look to the stars. What we need around here is a fire. Master, a fire would be dangerous in this place. No, we go. I mean in the fireplace, a fire. Master, that chimney has been blocked for three, four hundred years. You're kidding me. Well, I'll check this out myself. <laughs> Why, you're absolutely right, Igor. Igor, get me a steak, quickly. I just happen to have one with me, Master. Very good. Igor, I didn't want a forest, I wanted a stay. This is the slot's toothpick, Master. Don't get funny, Igor. I make the jokes around here. Yes, Master. Oh, that's terrible. You're absolutely right. Well, there's only one answer for it. Igor, you're going to have to go outside and fix it. But you can't send me out on a night like this, Master. Igor, the Count can do anything he wants to do. Besides, what better night? Perhaps on a dry night. And why would I want a fire on a dry night? You're selling any googie whoops. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. never mind. If you want anything done right, the Count has to do it himself. I'll go and invent something. Yeah, yeah. 
And it is Igor, the Count's latest invention. It is called the Frightenstein Chimney Declogor. How does it work, Count? How does it work? I merely put it into the fireplace in the chimney and I declog the chimney, don't you see? Fantastic. Of course, it's fantastic. The Count did it himself. I will go out and do it now. <laughs> yes, Master. Walked your dog tonight. Hmm. We'll be back in a minute. Bombastic. Oh, wow. Oh, the last time I saw Pet Vet, he was talking to some cat. <laughs> He's like that with all animals, from elephants to rats. I said to him, I'm quite convinced you'd rather talk to them than conversate with people. Don't you like your fellow men? He said to me, I like them fine, but I've picked up the knack of telling things to animals because they can't talk back. <laughs> Yes, I'm expecting the doctor fit fit. Oh, never mind. Where are you, doctor? Fit. Fisherman. Oh, honey, don't get excited. Oh, hello, doctor. There we go. Look what I've got for you today. Beautiful. There we are. Oh, isn't he a beautiful little fellow? You know he, what this is? He looks like a double-sized squirrel. A double-sized squirrel. That's very cute. <laughs> no, Igor, this is a groundhog. But he also has another name. What's that? Sometimes he's called a woodchuck. Woodchuck? I remember when I was in school, I learned about the woodchuck. Did you? Yes, a recitation. Let me hear it. How much wood can a woodchuck do? Chuck, if, if a woodchuck wood could chuck wood. wood. Very good, very good. Now, guess what this little fellow's name is? Woodchuck. No, I call him Charlie, or Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Let Charlie, here. Chuck. Here's some food to feed our good little friend here. Oh, I'm going to and feed him. And what does the button say? The button says, Pets are friends. Pets you are Charlie. They are Charlie. They're all our Charlie. friends. No. Charlie? No. It has a large, heavy body, and it, it's a burrowing rodent. That means it digs in the ground. Always burrowing money, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a little humor there from Dr. Pet. That, that's right. Now, they're from the squirrel family. And they range from Alaska all over to Canada and, and uh, the eastern part of the United States. Now, a large one can measure about 22 inches long, uh, including a six-inch tail. Isn't he a cutie, though? He's got a long tail. Man. Here, let me, let me get him over here. Yes. Let me get him over here. Come on over here and have... There we go. That's the idea. There you are. That is an EQ. Oh, look how nice he eats. Now, they have a, they're reddish-brown in color, and the feet are almost black. Yes. Now, now they, they inhabit the edges of meadows and forests, and they prefer rocky sites. Now, their den, that's where they live, is usually dug in a hedgerow or under a ledge or rock uh, in an open meadow, or it has several chambers and galleries. Chambers like, like in art galleries? Well, no, not quite an art gallery. That just means another section. You know, it has different rooms to go to. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh. Now, there, there are two to nine woodchucks born. Now, the young are very playful, and uh, the males are known, uh, well, as a matter of fact, they're known to get very grumpy over their territories. You know, if someone tries to move in, we can't have that. Well, now, an adult woodchuck is very slow and lumbering, and, and but very methodical. Now, they're active during the day, and when emerging to feed, and that means when they're coming out to feed, they pause near their burrow and they look around just to make sure that there aren't any predators around that are going to hurt them. Pred oh, that means bigger animals that might try to harm them. Oh, oh yes. We wouldn't want that. Yeah, but... Now, their scream is similar to, oh, the screeching of a whistle. 
Isn't that interesting? Now, what? as you can see, they always eat little green things. They just love that. And I want, I want to tell you something, Igor. Chuck is for you. For me? Yes, Igor. Oh, hello, Chuck. You and me, we're going to be good friends. Yes, that's but wonderful. first, I have to go and ask you oh, know who. The sloth, I know. Well, yes. go and ask him. I hope he's in a better mood today. I hope so. Here, Chuck. Chuck, 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 Chuck. Hello, Chuck. sloth. Chuck. It's me, Igor. Yes, I got ya a groundhog woodchuck fella, and he's come to stay with me. Yes, he only eats grass and a little bit of lettuce, maybe. It's all right for him to stay, hey? Yes? <laughs> he's a man of a few words, the slot. Oh, don't tell me. Did he? The, the few words was no. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry about that. You know, one of these days, I hope he gets up on the right side of the bed. He's always so grumpy. But don't worry, Igor, because off we go now, and Dr. Pet Vet will be returning with another animal. Goodbye, Charlie Woodchuck. Bye-bye, Igor. Bye-bye, Charlie. Come again. Having done that. Master, Master, the mail. We've got the mail. Ah, thank you, Igor. Ah, four bills. This one looks very important. Why is that, Master? Yum, yum, because of the seal on the back, see? It's a seal with a <laughs> ball. <laughs> oh, 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 Catch the fish, catch the fish. All right, let's find <laughs> out what they have to say. Dear Count Freitenstein. That's you. That is correct. On the 13th of this month, an inspector for IBM, the International Builders of Monsters, will visit your castle to inspect your monster, Moose. Master, our monster's name is Bruce, not Moose. Ah, they always make the same mistake. Yes. Please be ready with a glass of milk, a couple of cookies, and a monster that works. Master, today is the 13th. Today. What are we going to do? We must do something. I have an idea, Master. What? You get a new calendar. Don't be smart with the remarks. Come, think now, Igor. What can we do to improve Brucey? He looks a mess. I have a good idea, Master. What? We can put a paper bag over his face. No, that's not my bag. We must think of something else. Wait. He does seem to have a five o'clock shadow. Looks more like 8.30 to me, Master. Will you stop with the jokes? Now think, what can we do to, to make him look better? We could give him a shave, Master, and a shoe shine. No. What we will do is give him a shave and a shoe shine. Quickly, get the ingredients, Igor. Yes, Master. All right, you give him the shave. I will give him the shine now. Isn't that cute? <laughs> to get that free cloth for polishing. Uh, All right, get ready. Ready, Master. Get steady. Ready, Master. Go! Go. What happens, Master, if the inspector should arrive now, Master? Well, he'll just have to wait. We can only handle one customer at a time. <laughs> All right, Igor. Let me see. Well, what do you think? Looks better now, eh? Yes, Master. Yes, I agree with you. Ah, what can we do? I've got an idea. Don't answer that yet. Wait. Telephone master. I know what it is. Hello. The IBM inspector. You're coming over to see our monster. I am sorry. I'm very sorry, inspector. But you see, our monster has gone to the great monster maker in the sky. Thank you. Thank you, I know. I appreciate your condolences. <laughs> Goodbye. Master, your performance was masterful. How did you manage to look so grief-stricken and sorrowful, Master? You too would look grief-stricken if you had a monster that hadn't worked for 800 years. A play on the lowly herdsman who cast the shadow of theatrical license on the teachings of the teachings of the coughing Buddha. I am the wolf man. I am the 
wolf man extending greetings, salutations, and boop baby do and how do you do to all the refugees of the Frankenstone fan club. Welcome to set number one of the Lost Soul session. Cause we're gonna play some of them old golden goodies and here's a request now. Right. The wolf man has talent. Look. Beauty. Hey, get this. You know, there's one mosquito in our swarm who attacks his victims from behind. He's becoming known as Old Pain in the Neck. Ha ha! Cool, get there. That's funny, and you know it. Whoops, launch time! Shazam! <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> wrong show. Speak up, speak up. <laughs> Oh, it's you, Blob. What do you want, man? No, you can't come over. You made such a mess here last time you oozed in that you can't come over. Big Igor, clean yourself up and answer the phone. Talking to the Blob again, eh? This one. Hello? <laughs> yes, International Dirt. Oh, hello, Governor. Hello. This here is Neville. Daring your say in mine. <laughs> yes, Neville. How's the weather down there, Neville? Oh, well, it's downright cold down here. Gold? You say you found gold? No, 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 no. It's cold, you know. Cool, frozen, bitter. Ah, yes. I understand what you mean. Now, what do you want? Well, oh, Governor, I was digging uh, to this here mine looking for sand, and, yeah, and yes. we're getting in uh, all this yellow substance in yes, our way, yes, and it's, no. it's quite preventing us from getting at the sand. <laughs> I wondered uh, how we can get rid of this, all this yellow stuff. Well, just pick through it and throw it down a mine shaft. You've got to get at that valuable sand. No, and, and also, we've come across this very hard crystal substance, which greatly prevents us from getting all the sand, you but, say. Well, get rid of that, too. Just keep sending up the sand. That's where the money is, in sand, so we can fill up our glasses. Answer the phone, Igor. You might as well group this one up, too. <laughs> Hello? Yes, suck it to me, baby. Strangers in the night, exchanging glances. Wondering in the night, what were the chances? They'd be sharing me and before the night was through. Shall I repeat? One more time. No, my heart couldn't take it. Steve Lawrence, he is now. <laughs> Wait, Igor. The Count will answer this one. Yes, I know where he comes from. I'll fix the little bell. Yeah. All right, you're cut off. Hang on. Ah, ah you missed. Ah! Absolutely terrible. Good. I don't know, but this show, terrible. <laughs> Son of a gun! It must be a full moon tonight! <laughs> Guess what? A commercial again. You know, there's something I'd like to tell you. No one has ever accused me of sticking my nose into other people's business. Uh-uh-uh-uh-uh! Oh, 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 oh. Sticking my nose into people, yes! But people's business? Uh-oh, lunchtime. 
the uh, librarian through his first party last night, and we're not sure it was a success. Hundreds of people were milling about, and the host suffered total distress. He had planned a small dinner to quietly mark the birthday of Edgar A. Poe, but he wasn't prepared for the mob that showed up with balloons and gay streamers in tow. 163 candles were lit, and the party went into high gear. But what sort of a birthday is called a success when the main guest just didn't appear? <laughs> make the man, he told himself. I must stop going around in this dull, black outfit. Finding some bright feathers that a peacock had shed, he stuck them all over himself. Now, said the jackdaw, I am well dressed. All the birds will have to admire me. <laughs> oh, we'll see. And he strutted like a peacock across the lawn, but the birds were not deceived. They mocked him. And when he continued to parade in his borrowed plumes, pecked at him until all the fine feathers were torn off. <laughs> I'm getting you. I must have made a mistake, he said ruefully. I ought to go back and stay with my own kind. But his own kind wouldn't have none of him. <laughs> the other jackdaws refused to let him join the flock. You have given yourself too many airs, they said. You were not good enough for, for you yesterday, or we were not good enough for you yesterday. Now you are not good enough for us today. And the moral is, be yourself. Fine feathers do not always make fine birds. <laughs> Wasn't that scary? Don't you think that was horror? <laughs> You don't? Well, perhaps next time. Until then, the librarian says goodbye. knows what's happening. That is the doorbell. That is the mailman. Igor, answer it now. Yes, master. Mailman, here I come. Right back there. I stand. Uh... Oh, ah, 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 yes. ah, ah, ah. There's something wrong with his nerves, master. He always does. Just taking off like that. His I nerves. can well understand why. All right, Igor, what's in the mail today? Well, Master, first of all, there's three bills. <laughs> One to three bills. There are always bills, Igor. What else? And then there's three threats from the villagers. Ah, oh, standard, standard stuff. What else? Anything interesting? Well, Master, there's this man's copy of Playmaster Monster. Uh, 
Play Monster Master. Let Monster. me see that first. I must read it before you. Uh, <laughs> of course, I want to see what the <clears throat> monster makers have to say. The latest reviews, you see. <laughs> I understand, Mr. Uh -huh. <laughs> what is in the centerfold, uh, by the way? Not that I'm that interested. <laughs> King Kong, Master. <laughs> King Kong! Let me see that. I couldn't hold a candle to Brucie. No, I could not. Wait a minute! I have never been so insulted in my life. Igor, I want you to take a letter. Yes, master. No, no, no. I want you to write down what I have to say. Yes, master. Oh, I've never been so insulted. But, master, why are you so hot and angry suddenly? Don't you understand? Can't you see? Do you see what they've done to King Kong? What'd they do? They put a staple in his little tummy. Ooh. This is awful. Now, I want you to take this letter. Yes, master. I am sending this to the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Monsters. Why don't and not only that, I want it sent to the editor, the editor of Play Monster magazine, Clyde Beatty. Uh, Clyde Beatty, yes, and Master. And, of uh, course, a copy to Tarzan. <laughs> Ho, 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 ho. Now tell Santa what you want for Christmas. Elevator, elevator, elevator. Why are you thinking of elevators? I had an elevating idea. Moana Clyde went fishing at his favorite fishing stream, but when he saw its present state, he let out quite a scream. It's ruined said our Moana Clyde. There must be some solution to all this mess that's floating around and causing this pollution. But Moana got completely mad and turned an angry red when he pulled in his line and dragged out a plastic duck instead. Booga booga, which means it's zany zoo time. Oh, thank you very much, lads. Very nicely played, too. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, I really... Hello, hello, hello. How oh, nice to see you here at Zany Zoo. And it's your old friend here to tell you all about our animals and bird friends by the name of none other than Bawana Cloyd Batty at your service. And thank you for joining us. Now, we've got a lot of nice things to show you today. But first, I would like to do my impression of a fling most the bleeder -unk. That is a special kind of bird found in Africa on the southern tip. All right, here we go. Thank you, thank you very much. I thought you might like that because it's quite a rare bird. All right. I think I've found something here. Oh, goodness gracious. Isn't that wonderful? Two birds, birds of a feather, flock together. That's right, that's right. Wawana Clyde, but he's done it again. Oh. Oh, I'm afraid he has done it again. One moment, please. Hello? No, it was... Salibaburu! 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 That's what I said, isn't it? All right. That's very good. Yes, very good too. Well done. All right, all right. Yes, tune in. That's right. All right, now I think it's time that we should get to our film, but we have a very interesting personage to show you today. So let's get over to our cameras and get all the film all set there, looking good. Well, not so good. Yeah, all right, there's the adjustment needed. That's right, and we're getting just about ready, yeah? Switch is on, and away we go. Hello, hello, and what have we got here? Yes, the red-legged scrub wallaby. Isn't that cute? Two to three feet long, larger than a nair. Tail is up to one and a half feet long. Isn't it? Look at that. Oh, come on, cutie. Come on over here. That's right. That's right. Oh, yes. Now, the hind feet are not more than six inches long. Now, their thick, rounded tail tapers slightly, ever so slightly, only sparsely covered with hair. Look at that. Oh, look, the cute little arms. See how it feels like the cute little arms? Isn't that nice? 
Now the body fur is soft and thick, reddish brown with some reddish on the hind legs. You see, see him moving there? Oh, there, taking a peek again. And yellowish hip stripe. Oh, yes. Just like all policemen, eh? With a yellow stripe down their leg, that's right. Now they make tunnel-like runways in long grass, ferns and bushes. And they live in thick, scrub, dense forest undergrowth. Oh, aren't they cutie cutie. Now, now, they're very nocturnal, you see. Yes, that's right. They sleep during the day in thickets. They're inoffensive and quite curious. While well, they sometimes will allow a man to approach quite closely before they bound away ever so quick. Oh, they can be quite swift, they can. Now they have a habit similar to rabbits of thumping the ground with hind feet to warn fellows of danger. Isn't that good? Now wallabies eat only vegetation, grass, leaves, bark, roots, and fruit. Oh yes, quite interesting. Aren't they cute though? Now they compete for food with many rabbits which were introduced into Australia many years ago by Europeans. Oh, I think that's ever so interesting. I really do. That was really quite nice. That, didn't you like that? Now I like to explain to you that you'll notice that when I show films of all our animals and things, now we like them to run free, you see? And pretty soon they will be doing just that, but we just have them in cages so you can see them once. But very soon, Away they go, and that's the way it should be. And remember the saying from Zany Zoo, Ooga Booga, which means a white swallow can never find a yellow-tailed jackrabbit if he keeps hanging around the street corners. Isn't that right? Right. All right, mates. Come in the lounge, 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 Pets are friends. <laughs> Griselda said to me one day, please tell me, if you will, what happened to the cake I set upon the windowsill? I put it here an hour ago and hoped that it would cool. But now I see the cake is gone, absconded by some fool. <laughs> a fool is right, I said to her. He made a great mistake. A fool would be the only one to steal Griselda's cake. will make that person ill. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Out of sight. Love it, love it, love it. Come on in. <laughs> and let's live in Paradise House, <laughs> which is exactly what my kitchen is. Now, we're today going to have, we're going to have today, <laughs> testing you. Uh, we're going to have Ibaba Mimimers Martian Mangled Munch. Ibaba Mimimers. <laughs> Remember her? <laughs> and now what we do is slice an egg. Well, maybe we don't slice an egg. Watch <laughs> <Like> that. <laughs> now a little lamb of milk, just for color. <laughs> whoa, whoa, not too much. Don't spoil them. <laughs> and now, what do we got here? Yes, so oh, perfect. Coconut oil. <laughs> you know it'd be nice to put the coconut oil on the bamboo shoe. The coconut oil on the bamboo shoe. <laughs> I just have such fun with my cooking, you know? And now for the last ingredient. <laughs> Come on, here we go. <laughs> oh, Polly burning the candle at both ends. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and now, as you all know, to have evil mamometers, Martians, we must have a hawk of ham, which is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but come on, anyway, it's a fun number. Oh, <laughs> are you ready for this? Ham hawks high. Hey! <laughs> no, get in there, get in there. <laughs> See it. Want you to cook. <laughs> Oh, Zazu Pitts, you never would have made it anyway with me around. <laughs> now, we mix it up. Oh, that's the bamboo shoot. Well, so, bang! <laughs> we shot the bamboo shoot. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to the cauldron. 
Wonderful, wonderful. It really cleared my head. I had such a cold. All right, here we go. Here we go. Cauldron, cauldron, part of trouble. Cauldron boil, cauldron bubble. It's taster time. Professor will get quite upset if anybody mentions that motor cars and gramophones are not called his inventions. I too once thought it odd that he should make such fantastic claims, but he'll swear he thought of them first and even gave them names. But here's the funny part. Although he gave them names, he couldn't make them start. I am the professor, the professor, alone here in this castle, doing strange things. My name, Julius Sumner Miller. And what was the strangeness of the thing we last engaged in? You remember I had a spring scale? like this one, say, like this one, on which I hanged or hung a thousand grams and it read a thousand. Then I put on two thousand and it read two thousand. And I said I did not quite understand that all. So some of you may have some special virtue in studying about gravitation and learn something that we don't know. But anyway, thousand grams, it read a thousand. Two thousand grams, it read two thousand. Then I put the scale in the horizontal position, and on this end I put a thousand, and on that end I put a thousand, and then I went to the blackboard and pictured the scheme. Scale, pulley, string, weight. Scale, pulley, string, weight. Thousand to the right, thousand to the left. Oh, say some. They annul each other, and it reads zero. No, no, no. Thousand there. They aid and abet. Now, how many of you, I, I, I would ask, chose this? Well, some did. I regret to say it is wrong. And some of you are now very unhappy in your little hearts. The next question, how many of you said that? And those of you who said that are also now unhappy in your little hearts because it is wrong. And so, you see, it is time for me to divulge the truth. Now, a very important bit of our philosophy. I have the choice of telling you what the truth is or not telling you any more about it. If I don't tell you any more about it, you will fret and fever and you might get sick in your, in your little soul. So, I'll tell you what is the truth. But then there is another mandate on you. You must think out why it is so. Why it is so. Why it is so. I'm going to tell you. The scale reads. Are you with me? Yes. How many want to hear what I have to say about the reading of the scale? Most of the world. The scale reads 1,000 grams. Ha! <laughs> that is what comes out of this strange place. And why? About this I shall say no more, because it is our philosophy that you should think substantially about it and come to better understanding, but it reads a thousand. Hint, hint. Supposing I get rid of this weight here. I have gotten rid of it. I am now just holding the whole thing. And have I said enough? We shall return to this business of scales and reading because they are absolutely enchanting. 
And guess what I'm going to talk about in the next program? I am going to talk about a ball on a string. And would you not say this is a trivial matter? Trivial, absolutely trivial. And yet there are some principles of nature which will emerge, which will bewilder you no end. And in connection with that, I'm going to show you, oh, have you not on occasion put some water in a bucket and then said to your mama and your papa, look, mama and papa, look how strong I am. And you do this and the water does not come out. And we must ask why the water does not come out. And as I suggested already, strange things will emerge because many of you have been thinking wrong about it. The hilarious house of Frankenstein may continue if I let it. The castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet in Frankenstone, don't come alone. Definitely over. <laughs>